Okay. We're going to do another video, and this particular video is going to be one of more information than most people will ever need to know about this, but I have stumbled into so many people that just don't seem to understand about motors that I decided I was going to intervene and show you the things that you just normally don't see so that this thing can get its just rewards because the DeWalt mower is probably one of the best design mowers ever made. It will either be equal to or pass the performance of a gas mower. And yes, I said that right. Now, the DeWalt 20 volt mower has two generations of mowers. One is a Gen 1 and one is a Gen 2. And you ask, well, what's the difference between the two? A Gen 1 mower <coughs> is a mower that the motor drives a belt which drives the pulley which drives the blade. As you can see in this picture, this is why this is a bad mistake. If you notice right here, this pulley, being plastic, is melted. The thing is, <clears throat> they were talking about making it to where the blade would not be a pressure point to the motor because they were afraid that the motor itself would stop and burn up. So they decided to make it with a pulley. Well, unfortunately, when you're mowing the grass, minding your own business, and all of a sudden you start smelling smoke, what is going on is that the blade has come to a stop and the motor has not. And what happens is this pressure point that I'm showing right here ends up being on the opposite side of the pulley, and the, pull, the belt is being ripped across this section, and since this is a plastic pulley, it will literally cause this section to melt and collapse. Hence, you're out getting another pulley. And you may as well get four or five of them, because if it runs into it again, it doesn't have sense enough to stop. So you end up with that same issue again. That is a Gen 1 type system. The Gen 2 type system is a motor that, although you can't see it, if, you, if he was to flip that over, you would see three wires going into it. The reason why it's three wires is because this box right here is the, the mastermind of this mower. This box here is what supplies power to that motor with several permissions. These permissions are a switch that is located on the motor shaft detecting motor speed. <coughs> it is a switch that goes up the handle of the mower on the bottom side. They have a thing called a micro switch. This is just a view of a micro switch because I can't show you theirs. The micro switch gets pushed right here whenever you drop the handle back or when you put that safety key in there's a micro switch here and a micro switch down here in the the handle itself that they get closed and allow the electricity to flow on through once the, those two wires are small wires the power for the mower is a, a big wire like what you would find on an extension cord to run the motor. The other two wires are small wires because they go into this box. The box, once you activate the motor to, to get it to come on, it then looks at the motor shaft indicator and says, is it turning? No. He wants it to turn. Fine. Go for it. Then it asks that micro switch on the base. Are you closed? Let me know the handle is open. Or extend it out. And it says, 
Yes, I am. Okay, then it goes up to the handle, to that safety switch, and it says, is the key inserted? Now, this key is plastic, and actually, you could just stick a, probably a, uh, <clears throat> a tongue depressor in it, and it would still work. All it has to do is, as I was showing you a second ago, all it has to do is push this switch down. That's all it has to do. Once it pushes that switch down, it closes the contacts in this uh, micro switch, and then that goes into that wire, and it says, is the safety switch in place? And it says, yes, it is. It then says, okay, then the motor can start. Now, this motor is a little bit different from what anybody would think it is. It actually has three leads going to it. This is not, I believe, a 24... Uh, a 40 volt uh, DC motor. This is a 40 volt AC motor. Hence three leads. Now the thing is on AC motors there are two things you can do that <coughs> you really can't do that much on DC motors. One is control direction and the other is control speed. Now you'll get a little cordless drill and say well this thing's taking a battery inside of it. Yeah but it's going through an inverter and going into the motor. I'm believing that motor is an AC motor, it's not a DC motor. Being that this thing is three leads, I'm betting it's an AC motor. And that this box here converts the DC to AC to feed that motor. And the reason why I say that is because this system is set up to where when you're getting ready to mow your yard and you turn the thing on, it will turn on at a certain speed. You start hitting the grass, it detects the thing slowing down because of the grass, and it ramps it up to a higher speed so that it can actually start mowing. That being said, one thing to show you about this system is since this is a DeWalt system and they don't want you buying special batteries for this mower, what they've done is they've taken a 40 volt, bear in mind, 40 volt motor and they've taken your DeWalt batteries that you use on your impact, your drill and everything else keeping in mind of the same batteries they needed a motor that could take pressure of mowing the yard and they got a 40 volt mower. Well how do you do that? You take not one but two of those batteries and put them in series with each other you put them in series, you get 40 volts. Everybody's complaining about, <clears throat> if I put one battery in, it don't work. So this thing is junk. Because you always come with two batteries, so you'll have a spare. This is a high power mower. This is not a drill. Because it's a high power motor, it needs 40 volts to run. Now here's the beauty about it. To show you this, here is that mower right here. What's going to happen is you have a battery indicator on the back, which is right here. This battery indicator does not register battery condition. So I've got two batteries here that are fully charged. When I put them in, it will not show that they're in. And you'll notice by the side of them, they are two amp hour batteries. Now everybody says this thing requires 40 volt batteries or it won't come on. They would be wrong. The thing is, it takes 40 volts. It doesn't matter about the amp hours. Here's a, a key on it. For every two amps you put into it, you get 30 minutes run time. For people that don't believe that, I will show you. Sounds like it ran to me, and you saw the light flash. That flash of that light just simply meant I'm starting up. That's all it meant. Now, that light will also come on <clears throat> when the amperage of the batteries falls below the point of that motor running safely. What will happen is that light, this one here, 
will start to flash, telling you as you're running with the lawnmower that it's fixing to die. Thing is, the reason why that is so good is because if you're mowing the grass and you just put the batteries in and then all of a sudden it dies and that red light comes on, that doesn't say the batteries are dead. What that's telling you is the motor has been overloaded and it's shut off. Back out of the grass, lift it up like this, do whatever you want to do. Get those blades away from that thick grass because there's too much of a load on that motor. And if anybody says, that's a bad thing on that, that means it has no guts. You get the same performance out of a gas mower. When you're running through thick grass, a gas mower will shut off. You're not cursing it out. You're pulling it out, pulling all that grass out of it, and then pulling the cord again. Well, the thing is, there's no cord to pull on this. So if you go through the process of starting it up, and it says, I can't do that, that's the safety features inside of it telling it, don't do that. That's built into the mower as a safety feature. So don't do that. Now, this mower is capable of like a gas mower. If you're running into the grass and it stops, it's because there's too much grass to operate this thing safely. It shuts itself down. If you're mowing into the grass and once you hit the grass, it stops. Same thing, <clears throat> same scenario. You can't take a gas mower and put it in the grass and pull that cord and expect it to start. You can't pull it. Well, the thing is, this mower being electric, you don't think anything about that. You just turn it on. Well, the thing is, this guy here has those safety features built into it to say, no, you don't. And it'll keep it from running. It's not the mower's fault. It's the fact that it's built not to do that. It's saving you the money of buying another motor instead of staying with what you have. This is a 40 volt motor, not a 20 volt. It's a 40 volt motor. Therefore, you have to treat it with the respect of a 40 volt motor. It will not mow grass that's too thick. It will not keep running in grass that it shouldn't be cutting and it will not start if it's being held back from starting. That's what that light is all about. There is a sensor in there that says this motor can't take what you're giving it. Back off. It's that simple. No, it won't run on two batteries because it has to have 40 volts. We're going to take one out and as of now, it won't start. It's that simple. Now, bring the camera around this way, and I'm going to show you. This is the safety key. As I said before, you can use a tongue depressor if you want. All it does is push that little limit switch in. That's all it does. This has to be pushed down only because there is a lever in here with a rotating uh hook. This takes that hook and pushes it down. When it pushes it down, it pushes it over this lever so that when you pull this lever, because that hook is now over that lever, it goes like that. And when it does that, it pulls the heavy duty switch over that micro switch, telling that micro switch you can start. It now has the power, sends it back down to the motor, and this thing starts. This pushes the, the J-hook down, and this pulls the J-hook entire lever backward to turn the switch on. Just to show you, push down to push that hook down, pull back. Oh, the one thing I forgot to show you, once you push that hook down and get it backward, you let go of that at any time you want. And when I say any time you want, as soon as I'm hooked and I can feel it right there, I can let go. It's going to start.
But that, everything that you could want to know about this motor, the safety light on the back side of it, the battery indicator, the fact that it is a three pole, because there's three leads behind on the back side of this thing, it's a three pole motor with a sensor staring at the shaft about it even moving. Then it has the motor controller, which is right here, which tells it either you need to pick up speed because of the grass or you need to shut off because one of the bad things about the system has acted up. This is an outstanding motor. This is an outstanding mower. DeWalt put a lot into this and I think it was extremely well thought out. And if it acts chicken to you, it's because you're doing something with this mower not even a gas mower can operate on. I hope this was of help to you. I hope that you don't buy batteries you don't need. I hope that when you get a battery that's bad, and so far I've heard a lot of things about the 10 amp batteries, about how they keep going bad. That's not the mower. That's the battery. Deal with the battery. Matter of fact, if you want to, leave the 110 in and stick in a 2. Yes, it'll run. It's not looking at the amperage. It's looking at the voltage. However, you can't go any farther than that 2 amp battery will give you. So if that 2 amp battery will only give you 30 minutes or in this particular case running actually mowing probably 20 minutes of running, that's all you're going to get because that 2 amp battery will suddenly become too weak to supply the 20 its 20 volts of the 40 that's needed. So you can mix and match batteries all you want, but it runs off of the lowest voltage. I mow my yard with two 4 amp batteries because I get an hour's worth of running time. And my yard isn't big enough to need anything else. And since I don't need gas, I don't need oil, I don't need new plugs every year, I don't need to clean out my carburetor, and I can actually run this thing in the house because that's what I've been doing just now, running it in my front room. Doesn't smell a thing, doesn't leave a mess. I just fold it up and stick it in a closet. Yeah, I stick it in a closet because it'll fit there and it'll never get in my way. When I'm ready to mow, I just simply pull the thing out of the yard, push the switches and take off. I don't adjust or tweak anything. I just push and go. That is my scenario of the DeWalt mower. It's one of the best ones ever designed as far as I can see and it'll probably outperform anybody out there providing you do it within its safety factors. That's the end of this video.